We're glad to have you with us this morning. Pleasure to be here. And Michael will be making a statement at CSIS this morning that will be available on our website. So it's been 15 months since you've been on the job in the wake of Macondo. Um, you've done a, a variety of different things over that last year and a half, including reorganizing the Bureau, setting up new regulatory standards for safety and operations and protocols, recruiting new people to fill the capabilities. As you look back on the last 15 months, what are kind of the major challenges and, and maybe uh, accomplishments that you like to think of? Well, you've just touched on some of them. Um, I came in in the midst of a crisis. The oil was still spilling into the Gulf of Mexico. So we faced the immediate challenges of dealing with that and the immediate aftermath of that, including the deep water drilling moratorium. And then very quickly we needed to turn uh, to reorganizing the Bureau, uh, which I'm going to talk about in more detail uh, today, uh, to really allow the missions of the multiple missions of the agency to be pursued with the kind of commitment, dedication, and focus uh, that MMS historically uh, was not allowed to give because it had too many uh, and some conflicting missions. So that's, those are the circumstances under which I came in. Um, the reorganization really from the beginning has been the long range goal mm -hmm. and we're delighted obviously to be approaching uh, the completion of that which will be just a few days from now. But I think what gives me and my team the most satisfaction is the sense that uh, we really have accomplished a tremendous amount in terms of enhancing the safety of offshore drilling enhancing the environmental protection associated with offshore drilling, uh, tightening up uh, ethics standards, uh, and really giving um, a change to the culture uh, of the agency in a way that I think the agency needed. The reorganization has done another thing, which is we created a number of new and very important functions. Uh, we brought in some very talented people uh, from the outside to inject some new blood into the organization. Mm -hmm. So it's a body of work that not only I, but my entire team, we're very proud of. So now that the Gulf is safer in terms of uh, process protocols, safety equipment, containment equipment, um, what are the prospects for international cooperation? They're excellent. Um, we've actually done a lot of work on the international front. We have um, a series of programs that we work with the State Department to provide technical assistance to various countries that are just getting into the game of offshore drilling but because mm -hmm. we think it's important to help them uh, as they enter into this world. But we're also uh, dealing quite frequently with our regulatory counterparts uh, in the North Sea and elsewhere to see what we can learn from them and what they can learn from us. So the level of international engagement that we're now involved in I think is at an all-time high okay. uh, and we're determined to keep that up because we think it's in everyone's benefit uh, to have that at a high level. Not to say that there will ever be necessarily international standards that are universally applicable. That's mm -hmm. not the goal here. Right. The goal is to learn from one another. So the question on the Arctic, special set of circumstances, what's been your experience when you look at the risks in the Gulf of Mexico versus uh, the Beaufort or the Chukchi? Well, they are very different. Uh, obviously, very, very different kinds of environments, both in terms of the amount of uh, exploration and development that's taken place historically uh, and with respect to the kinds of challenges uh, that exist. Uh, and so we have been focusing very closely and very carefully on the special challenges presented by the Arctic, and in particular with what to do in the event, unlikely event, but the event of an oil spill. And so we are focusing very intently uh, on those issues and are determined to be satisfied that there are credible plans in place mm -hmm. in the unlikely event that there is an oil spill. Uh, lots of things are different. Uh, the depths uh, at which drills, uh, wells would be drilled, much less. Yeah. Pressures, lower. Uh, but we've learned uh, all too painfully from Macondo that low probability, high incidence events need to be taken into account when evaluating both plans to drill and applications to specific permit applications. And so we're going to continue to focus on those as we move forward in the Arctic. Excellent. Michael, absolute pleasure. Right man, right time. Thank you very Glad much, Frank. Appreciate us. it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.